Welcome everybody. This is uh, Michael Cummings from Taylor Business Group and the Sales Transformation Institute. And I'd like to welcome my co-presenter today, Chris Black. Chris, you want to say hi to everybody? Hey everybody. Pleasure to join you today. Thanks for having me, Michael. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, just the one logistic point is that uh, we, if you want to ask a question, use the chat box there on the right hand side. We don't have kind of a, a system where we can unmute you and have you ask it live. So just uh, use the chat box to ask us any questions at any time during the presentation. I'll keep an eye on it. And I'm really looking forward to today because uh, I've been just just a brief introduction about me. I actually work really intensely with a bunch of uh, probably about 20, 25 MSP owners in uh, transforming their sales, their relationship management, and their marketing. And in the last three weeks, I've probably, uh, we've had weekly Tiger Team meetings as well as um, daily meetings with most of them, or at least once a week meetings with them. So I'm very, very uh, up to speed on what's working, what's the mentality out there, you know, all, all the factors that we're kind of dealing with right now. So I'm going to try to weave those into the conversation. And Chris, I know you've had conversations with MSPs, I'm sure, you know, frequently without, within the last two or three weeks. Is that true? Absolutely. MSPs of all shapes and sizes that are dealing with many of the same challenges. And I, I actually wanted to start out on a positive note, actually. And um, I think there's two things to be, to be positive about. One is uh, we should be all grateful that we're in the MSP business and that most of us have had, you know, if, at least my clients have had a phenomenal financial run literally through the end of March. They'll still, they'll still actually be hitting record numbers through the end of March. And I think that's the end when the uncertainty hits kind of in April. And two is you have never been more important to your clients than you are now and to prospective clients than you are now. So sometimes we, we may be kind of humble and we may not really think about uh, what we actually, the value that we provide to people, but literally the people that you transition to a remote computing model you've pretty much saved their business and you've made it easier for them to uh, to ride out the storm that we're going to see in the next week or two. And so uh, take that to heart is uh, sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit for the value that we provide, but you literally have never been more important to most of your clients right now. And I think the same is going to be true to prospective clients. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, I think the second thing to be uh, grateful for is there is still opportunity out there, both immediately and, you know, if you position yourself for the rebound, you, you will be coming back pretty quickly. So there is there is good news out there, but I always start with, uh, I don't know about you, Chris, I always think gratitude is a good place to start out because it'd be one thing if we had a rough economic, you know, turn before this happened, but we tend to, we all tended to have pretty good, pretty good uh, financial years. So here's, I'm just going <clears> to <throat> start out with some um, frame, a way to frame the conversation we're going to have. One is, well, you got to realize the, the, the whole world has been in the equivalent of a car accident at the same time. And so a lot of what we're dealing with now is kind of emotional and, and irrational and trauma, 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 both, you know, in our companies and in our client base and the prospective client base. So. That's the thing to keep in mind as we go through this presentation is the thing that really has changed is, is the mindset of people. And we'll go into how we have to address that. Uh, but I always, wanted, I always wanted to tell this story, Chris. They, they, they had one of my clients was in New Orleans when Katrina hit. And he one day woke up and his business was literally underwater. All of his clients' businesses were literally underwater. And he had absolutely no idea where any of his uh, client base was. So the the idea here is that, uh, you know, this is gonna end at some point, you're gonna get through, but uh, this guy still has clients that have been with him from that day, would never even think about leaving him. And they, they went out and told all their friends and business friends about how great he was. So he's still running a uh, thriving business today. And I, can't, I don't remember when Katrina was, but th that was probably, even worse than what we're facing today. So there is a playbook that you can actually uh, that can, you can actually turn to, and that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, well, the other thing we'll go into is business is being sold right now and today. I talked uh, yesterday to two of my clients that brought in a new MRR client this this week, 
in a, another one of my clients is selling a ton of stuff around telephones and he just sold a hundred thousand dollar order for a bunch of laptops so it's easy when you look out in the um even though the buying process has been traumatized somebody some people are still buying and there's some businesses far less affected than other ones so we'll get into that but why the you know the general if you look generally out into the world now you're going to see a whole bunch of confusion and trauma and drama and what changes that is when you look at this the microeconomics of it actually the specific clients you have the specific prospects you can go after the specific types of offers that make sense now it's when you get down into the detail of where opportunities at that we just have to dig a little bit harder these days to find it but there is uh, opportunity out there and the Ground Zero story with Ryan Miller. There's a one of my clients is literally less than five minutes away from the uh, from the uh, convalescent home in Seattle where all of this started, and I spent a lot of time with him over the past two or three weeks, and we went through his entire client base, and he's in really good shape. I mean, 90% of the people that are his clients are going to be pretty largely in a in, in a not severely impacted. Let's put it that way in what's going on. So that's the other kind of general advice I have for you is don't think generally, you got to think very specifically and you got to think, and, there, and if you think specifically, you'll see there is opportunity both with your existing clients, but our, our topic today is on new business. And the two things, and I know Chris will, Chris will cover this in, in, in great detail in a second, but the, the big thing now is how you act now is actually going to determine how successful you're going to be in the next two or three months. I mean, it's if if you don't do the things that we talk about today, you're going to recover much more slowly and a lot more randomly than people that do what we're talking about today in terms of both focus and in terms of actions that they can be taking right now. So that's it. That that's the a major takeaway we want from you. To, we want you to get from today is it's all about action, right? You can sit and you know watch Fox News and CNN and be depressed or whatever, but that doesn't help you. You know. Time just passes and opportunity passes and you're not actually moving forward. So our, our whole thing today is like, what kind of actions do you take? And in order to take those actions, what kind of mentality do you have to have? What kind of spirit and heart do you have to have to put into it? And I think that's gonna be the difference for everybody on the phone. So with that, oops, I went the wrong way there, sorry. With that, I was gonna ask Chris, can you just give a brief introduction of yourself and your background? Wow, uh, thanks, Michael. I'm Chris Black in a, in a nutshell. So I've been in the IT industry for the last 20 years, uh, most of my adult life. Um, I've carried a bag most of my career. So understanding the, the sales rhythms, the sales motions, the challenges straight from being feet on the street. Um, I've risen through the ranks in, in a very successful Western Canadian MSP business from being a business development manager um, through to being a director of sales, to VP of sales and marketing and, and eventually ascending to a, a president's position and handling a, a large integration of our organization uh, after it got acquired. Um, so I've seen kind of, of everything within that sales sphere from the leadership, the management, the coaching aspects uh, of things straight up to the leadership and, and what we're looking for from a, a business ownership perspective. I think I bring a bit of a unique um, and what I would think is a, a relevant perspective to this. You know, I didn't live through Katrina, but I can tell you growing up in, in Calgary, Alberta, an economy that is completely dependent on a singular industry that is oil and gas. I've been through two massive upheavals in the oil and gas industry. And although those weren't global pandemics that, that forced us to uh, social distance and be in our homes, um, they did have dramatic and immediate impacts on massive industry. Um, so some of the measures and activities that we took, some of the impacts and challenges that we saw, and some of the real world experience from there, I'm hoping I can, I can lend some of that experience to the conversation. Today, I'm Chief Revenue Officer of Jolera. We're a white label provider of, of service solutions for other IT companies to, to be available to their clients. Uh, we're a global company that is, is dealing with many MSPs and integrators uh, worldwide as they deal with this set of challenges. So I spend most of my days talking to business leaders, um, sales leaders from various organizations, and, and I think uh, I'll bring whatever I can um, from those <laughs> conversations into this conversation. No, I'm, re it's re I'm really glad that you uh, 
could join us, Chris, because what I really think, uh, a couple things, that all of you who are owners of MSP businesses are also sales managers. So how you think about driving this, the process forward, both client, both prospecting, client account management, and marketing, uh, that, that's part of your, it's a big part of your job now too. And many of the people uh, in our session today are also, and including the owners, by the way, are also sales people. And the way you organize and kind of get the get your mentality right. And there's what I found is there's no substitute for getting somebody like Chris who's been in through both of those roles before, and can tell you what's essential, what you know, what the blueprint is, what action steps you have to take. That's why I'm I'm actually thrilled that uh, you're on the call. I think the only two things I'd add is I, I've worked with a, most most of my clients, uh, actually all my clients have been growing literally i've been working for them for like four with them for four years and they've all been growing between 25 to 33 to 35 percent so they've been kind of high flyers in the msp industry and having all of that stop within you know a day and then uh figuring out how to retool i've been working with them pretty really in the trenches for about the last three weeks almost on a daily basis with each of them so I can I can share kind of the blueprint we're coming up with and the mentality you got to you have to come up with and um, I'd be curious about your response. But I, what I really believe is there's only two fundamental responses to what's happening now. Is number one is that you can be paralyzed, you can kind of you know react and retreat and uh, be kind of random, not know exactly what you're going to do and why it makes sense and putting your full heart into it. Or you can be, you can take the other road, right? Which is really work out your plan, work the plan with all of your, you know, all of your, uh, all of your uh, part, and go that way. And that's what we we want. We want to help you, uh, at least, be able to make the choice to go towards that proactive and uh, adjustment and and do do the things. There are things you should be doing and could be doing to grow your business even today. Would you agree with that, Chris? I agree with that 100%. 100 percent every single word okay and just to show you business is being sold i like i said here's in a here's one of our uh, business development people for one of our clients they sold i think three yeah three new rmr clients last month and then they they're still out there trying to find new ones this month and so that's what we're that's what we're after right now so uh have the mentality that there is opportunity out there there is things you should be doing and this is a sales system we use, you know, with all my clients, which basically says, here's here's how you sell MSP services in a sense. And what it says is, you know, first of all, you got to decide when you're prospecting, who's the best people or individuals and types of companies and specific companies you should be talking to now. And think that through pretty clearly. And the good news is there's going to be a lot of pain out there, right? There's, there's probably more pain now than I've, I've seen in the last, uh, you know, but has it been 10 years, right? So there's pain does create opportunity. Uh, but what is happening now is the people that are going to be able to make the leap to, to decide to do things differently or make a change in some fashion uh, will be uh, the people you got to find. So again, there's there's good news in that there's pain. It's your job is to is to really zone in on who are the people that are in a position to be able to make that leap and go and go and make a decision to do some business with you. So we're going to break this into two two parts. One is what you'll see is we're going to go through a a, a uh, playbook strategy of things you can do. And I'd, I'd almost think of the playbook as like the menu at McDonald's. Right. It's not like you're going to find a particular menu item that's going to be a magic bullet and change everything. But there's a series of things that you can do and do intently that actually will make a difference here in the next 30 or 45 days for you. And two is Chris is going to cover this part is you take you take that and then you put in a motivated action, right? Motivated effort. And that's really kind of a combination of brains and heart and spirit, you know, and if you put those two things together, you're going to come out way ahead. You know, frankly, there's probably no MSP. We have about 70 people on the call. There's probably no MSP in the world that should not be on this call. Because if you're serious and you and you want to know what to do, you just there, you need a little bit of a game plan, and then you need a whole, whole lot of effort from both the sales management standpoint and from a from a sales person action standpoint. So here's the McDonald's menu. 
right? So there is no there is no magic bullet, but there's a menu of things you can be doing right now in order to generate business, right? And that one caveat, and I think I'd let Chris comment on this as well, is all what you want to do is nothing you do should be either self-centered or or promotional or salesy, right? All res all outreach right now needs to be respectful, relational, and value added. Uh, would you agree with that, Chris? Absolutely. I think the, you know the modern playbook on sales is focused on the customer. It's focused on empathy and finding value that you can bring to them. I think there's no more important time than now understanding that many of the customers we're dealing with are, are dealing with monumental upheavals in their business. You have to be focused on them, not on you. Right now is about planting seeds for the long term, not harvesting things before they're ready. Yeah, and and I think the other thing I've found is uh, when I mentioned those people bringing in uh, new MRR clients, most of them have been brought in by references or referrals from either clients or business contacts that they have. So I think the second tip I would have for you and that Chris would have for you is that what you really want to do, be doing now is is maximum personalized outreach. And what that says is people that you know and people that you've had some kind of relationship with, we'll get into a second. It's really, you know, an outreach that may be no more, no more complicated that says just checking in, see how you're doing, how's the business going, anything I could do to support you at this point. If you run across somebody that's struggling with the remote computing thing, send them my way, right? Something really simple. But what's going what's gonna to allow you, one of the benefits now, it's going to allow you to re-energize all of your personal relationships. And it's going to allow you to build some new ones over the next kind of 30 days. It's actually going to have a really good uh, outcome for your business. So uh, one place to start that way. So the number one is reach out to all your business relationships, both on LinkedIn and, and, and we'll get into some more stuff on that in a second. But then second of all is uh, if you're a member of an association, so many of our guys are members of like uh, medical practice administrators association or legal Legal Administrators Association, you now have permission to contact all of those people, all of those members as a fellow member of that association and do basically the same thing, right? Is to um, go out and say, you know, think about you, you know, we're both members of blah, blah, blah organization. How's your business doing? Any any issues re relating to remote computing? If so, give me a call. I'd be happy to answer any questions, right? It's a it's any an, an excuse oh not an excuse it's a good reason to build and and improve relationships with anybody that you have a mild relationship with now and the reason those first those two bullet points are important is you want to have as many it's two for two reasons one is you want to have as many eyes and ears scouting the marketplace for you as possible to find the to find the people that are struggling and and can have can be prospective clients for you. And then two is it's there's there's a it's a monumental opportunity to improve your relationship with any business contact or all of your clients. So that's kind of the upside of all this stuff. Um, four is you want to be targeting um, on a very micro focus basis because there still are uh, people doing business. There still are businesses that are less least affected by it. So for example, and maybe maybe. Chris, you can give an example, like when you were going through your hard times, how did you how did you shift from kind of a general marketplace into specific industries or specific companies that were good targets? You know, I, I took an interesting approach to it, and, and it's one that in this time that there will obviously be exclusions to it. Um, but I doubled down on, on where we were successful, where we knew we had stories, narratives, proof points, evangelists, and references on being able to provide value and it was provable. Um, so, you know, we knew the energy industry was hurting, but we kept going after the energy industry because we knew we had a product that could help them get through the tough time and then bounce back from it. Um, the focus was on helping them do the bounce back. So we, and I talked about this a little bit later, we really focused heavily on, on our, what I'll refer to as, as our zebra. And that was our unique customer profile. 
Um, mm -hmm. Who are they? Why are they a unique customer profile? What value do we add to them? And, and can we prove it? And then who are the personas at play? And, and for a lot of the you guys on the call, if you're doing any sort of advanced marketing today, you know, you really know who your personas are. You know your unique customer profile. If you're sitting on this call and you don't, that's some of the work that you should be doing right now. Um, obviously, you want to stay away I, I, unless you're fully leveraged into retail and the only thing you can do is in retail, but staying away from retail, staying away from the houses that you know are burning in industry. Um, if you focus around that and you take a look at where have we been successful in the past, what type of businesses have used our service to a, a verifiable good, um, double down on why they chose you, who their decision makers were, and start being in the watering holes that they're at and talking to them in their language about the value that you can bring. Yeah, and I think if you think in terms of what's going on now, there are <clears throat> there are businesses like food distribution, trucking, logistics, uh, some aspects of construction. I mean, we can go through a full list here, but there are there are industries that are still operating and still doing business even in the shutdown time term in the U.S. And the second thing is you also want to target like who just following up exactly what Chris said is who is the who's the clients that you want to attract after this is over and start to be targeting your messaging and focusing on them. So one example we talked about with one of my clients yesterday was he does a lot of work with medical practices and law firms. So one thing we're going to do is he's we're going to do webinars specifically for those two industries and have one of our experts from the other SDP group you know present for those. And then two is um, he's going to do he's actually going to do a webinar that features a client of his in each of those industries. And what that client is effectively going to do is talk about what what they're doing, what their priorities are, how they're getting through. But also in effect that's going to be a, a an advertisement for the work that the MSP did in transitioning the company from their current model into re, into remote computing. So you have a lot of opportunities to be positioning yourself for you know when we come out of this, but it requires a lot of thought and focus on you know who those industries are, how you reach out to them in the right way, and how to how to actually position yourself as being their first choice for being an MSP provider when you come out of this. Uh, a couple other quick things. One is uh, ask clients. Uh, do they know anybody that they in their business network who's struggling? Uh, they they would be the ones that through their just normal networking and all that might be able to point you in the, in the direction of people that are still operating that might need some help or people that are struggling with the transition or remote. Um, kind of like Chris and I are doing right now is think about things you can be doing in cooperation with uh, business allies, like co-marketing with business allies. So um, one of my clients, for example, was doing uh, webinars for the clients of an accounting firm, talking about what it is, they, what, what's the kind of next in remote computing and what, what are they going to be able to do. So I think that's the, uh, that's the issue that they have to, uh, that they have to uh, concentrate on in a sense of wh who are people that you know that you could that have a complementary client base and are there things you could do together to bring value to the to both of your client bases and the other two things are kind of obvious but uh, <clears throat> one is develop some quick hit offers uh, maybe Chris has some examples he can go through in a minute but some of our guys are actually bringing uh, obviously things around security. Uh, there are things they're doing in terms of teams and collaboration and SharePoint. There are things they're doing in terms of uh, network as a service, and a lot of them are exploring ways that they can, you know, build kind of leasing and financing into their into their business much more strongly. So there are all those things you want to explore and you want to put them up front because you know selling small things here is going to help uh, help us all in the short term as well. I don't know, Chris, do you have any other examples of kind of quick hit, quick hit offers or anything that comes to mind? Yeah, I think relevance and marketplace when it comes to those quick hit offers is essential. If you have a hardware as a service program now for things like laptops, um, I know in, in up in Canada that's being eaten up. Uh, security is a massive one. Um, you know, we're seeing massive uptick, upticks in um, ransomware uh, opportunism. We're seeing huge upticks in email-based security attacks. Um, having an email-based security program to help customers that are on Office 365 protect their Office 365 mailboxes. 
um, you know, any sort of VPN offers and, and quick ways that you can give customers access to their critical infrastructure or their desktops. There's a lot of customers that have been caught unawares by this that don't have a, a proper Citrix farm, that don't have proper remote access, that, that simply opening up RDS and, and giving people um, unadulterated access from one PC to another isn't necessarily the most secure solution. Um, extending uh, remote desktop um, to them is is a great quick hit offer. Uh, there's a lot of people working off their home PCs that that don't necessarily have any element of security or very minimal elements of security. So things like Cisco Umbrella, um, where there's 30 day trials and, and there's a lot of free stuff. This may not necessarily mean you're making a dollar off of this now, but what you're doing is you're putting a wedge in the door for later. And once they have that level of security, uh, you're at bare minimum able to help them now provide that value and continue the conversation later on. So I would look at anything that has both a short and a longer term um, play for you and your business and allows you to add value now um, and keep that value going in the long term. And the other thing is what's going to happen too is, and it may, what happened actually in the last recession anyway, 2008, 2009, is actually bigger companies started laying people off and but they still needed to have IT work done. And generally what they did was shift some of that work to either contractors or MSPs. So just be, it's not a major one right now, but keep, keep an eye out for what kind of work is getting displaced by people laying, you know, some people furloughing people or laying people off. That work still has to get done. And there may be kind of creative arrangements that you can put together with even larger companies as well. So, so keep keep an eye out for that too. So you see there is a menu of things you can do. This is you know a playbook, if you will. So there, what you really want to do is think about how you personally can implement or how your company can implement all this stuff. And this is kind of where the action is therapeutic thought comes in. Is you just need a plan and you need to act on it. I just want to touch really briefly on um, <clears throat> what we found with digital events because that's uh, there's been a there's been a there's been both a vacuum created by people canceling live events, and then there's been a rush to offer a whole bunch of digital events that I don't think has been very well thought out and probably not not as timely as they needed to have been. So digital events, what we were finding with our STP clients is that uh, they are all finding associations for for sure that are interested in doing co-sponsored events, and what we recommend too is think about instead of just doing it yourself and kind of talking about technology think about how you could partner like kind of like chris and i are doing right now is get panelists or people that would be a complimentary view for you because people are getting beaten to death with remote computing and all these other kinds of uh, technology events uh, what you really want to do is reach out to them as a fellow business owner or a fellow business leader and what kind of content makes sense now. And I'll give you an example in uh, my client in San Antonio uh, is doing a webinar with the, a local uh, government official and a local banker. And he's not, he's not even talking about technology much, but it's positioning him as somebody that's getting, you know, important people in front of business people at a critical time. And in many ways, that's gonna make him seem like it's certainly going to differentiate and distinguish him from any other MSP in that general area. So, um, again, the other the other thing too is if you're going to do these, realize you have to put in some effort these days to get people to attend. And the great contact is what attracts people first. But then there's there's got to be more than just an email blast goes out. You got to you got to email. You got to call. You got to work your personal LinkedIn contacts. You got to uh, leave personal messages. You got to you got to ask people that are your contacts on LinkedIn to share it, right? So, and consider advertising. Some of our guys are doing uh, advertising on LinkedIn now. Uh, not very expensive and it's, it can get your message right in front of the right people. So do digital events and uh, learn how to do them correctly and just don't do a knee-jerk kind of me too uh, uh, event because it's, pro it's probably gonna get lost in the shuffle these days, so. What I really want to do now is kind of turn it over to Chris and I'll set it up and then just kind of let him go. But uh, what you owners of MSPs now and, and leaders of MSPs are basically wearing two hats. One is how do you behave as a sales manager or a sales leader uh, with even if you only have one or two a, a salesperson in the camp, how do you lead that team now? And two then is Chris going to talk about as somebody who's been a 
line salesperson through similar situations. What do you, what do you have to do as a salesperson to be able to pull to be productive, stay active, and go that way? So off to you, Chris. I'll let you take it from here. Do you mind? Yeah, you bet. You know, when when we were talking about this and setting it up, we we you always want to sort of frame these conversations and and prepare for it. So we we talked about some key points um, for both of these. And as business leaders and owners, you know, there's no more important time to be involved than now. Um, your relevance to other business leaders so far surpasses the relevance that your sales team will ever have. Um, you you really need to be the one who gets involved. When there's conversations about business continuity, sustainability, the ability to pay bills, that's, that's not a conversation that most salespeople have the business acumen um, or the relevance to have, and that's where business leaders need to get involved. Um, Michael and I broke it down really into to two key areas, and that's the role of the sales manager or, or leader, you know, ignore the titles, but in terms of sales leadership, um, uh, from goal setting to new performance metrics, you know, what, what do you really need to do to keep the business going, keep the business informed um, and drive forward? Uh, and then we'll talk about the actual salespeople themselves. But uh, when you're a sales leader, um, the, the first thing to, to look at is goals. And, and I think um, the goal for a sales leader themselves um, you as a sales leader, it needs to be, your goal is measurement, inspection, and accountability. I always refer to this as MIA, um, but you, you really need to, to put down what do you want to measure and why. Um, you need to, if, you're, if you say that's a critical measurement, you need to inspect it and inspect the activity to, you know, excuse the, the term, get rid of through some of the bullshit and, and make sure that the information that you're looking at is accurate and correct. Uh, and then you need to hold people accountable. If if you say that there needs to be daily updates on something, if you say that by the end of the week, everybody has to have X, Y, Z done, you need to hold them accountable to getting that done. Now is the time for you to be rigid um, and difficult because this is a time where the, the sense of urgency needs to be high. And if you've been, you've been trying to build um, behaviors, habits and, and rigor into your business, but because people were writing sows and getting um, peace statements of work signed off and, and the business was flowing, you just didn't prioritize it. Now is the time to prioritize it, build those habits and behaviors and, and drive them forward. Um, I, I think as a sales manager, how do you adjust your goals? I think man, mandatory tracking of activities um, it is very, very important. You know, we, we always look at it in the IT industry and, you know, we, we challenge and, and task utilization of technical resources because we can attach a, a billable rate, a billable hour, a, a billable outcome to those activities. In, in sales, it's the same thing. Sales activities are, are highly related to that entire order to cash process. Um, it, you're just looking at it through a different lens. So whether you're using Yammer or Slack or you use email, um, getting your sales team to track their activities and, and let you know what they're working on on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and I, I know this is going to seem distant and far for a lot of you. I actively have in, in my global sales teams right now uh, weekly updates that are happening. And those weekly updates are itinerized snapshots of what value did you add this week? What did you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Um, not only does that give me as the sales leader insight, that gives my CEO, our finance team, our operations team, all visibility into the value that you're, they're adding. If you have sales team members that simply can't fill their days, their CRMs are updated, their clients have all been contacted, um, you know, they, they've chased down every opportunity and every lead, uh, you really need to look at how can you utilize this person to provide more value to the business? And if you can't come up with a, a correct answer on that, dependent on where your business is from a cash flow perspective, you may need to look at that role as being superfluous. And a lot of this is going to sound really harsh, but in times like this, I mean, I've, I've been, as I said a little bit earlier, I've been involved in this twice. Um, and the first time we acted too late and we, we nearly didn't make it out of it. The second time we acted immediately, we were thorough, we were harsh, we probably went a little bit overboard, 
but we came out of it like a rocket ship and coming out of it like a rocket ship really allowed our momentum to carry us into the position where we were able to sell the company um, and, and really exit the business in a very positive way. So what you do now from a business leader and sales leader perspective is really going to dictate what you get from your teams moving forward. I, I, I can't suggest enough that you track their activities though and have them track it and build that into a mandatory weekly cadence. Um, I, I wouldn't adjust numerical goals right now. I know there's a lot of sales managers. I've been talking to sales leaders who are like, yeah, no, we're spending our time. We're going to reforecast our numbers. Unless you're a publicly traded organization that owes it to the marketplace, and then I understand that, that reformatting of targets. If you're not, don't change your goals. Track against the goals that you already had. There's far too much uncertainty and disruption in the buy-in process all of the buyer behaviors, all of the typical agendas that business have, the reasons that they operate, the ways that they do procurement, everything is, is up in the air right now. This is the new, the new non-normal is what I'm calling it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, can't, you can't forecast that. None of the, the sales motions that used before um, have any meaning anymore because the typical buyer is no longer operating under the same principles. So for you, I wouldn't change the numbers and the goals and put those in front of your salespeople because A, as a business leader, you're setting yourself up for too much uncertainty and failure, and you're going to set your teams up for demoralization and failure. I think this is the time where you go to activity-based goal setting, not numerically-based goal setting. Continue to look at the numbers, but your focus is on activities because this is about the customer and this is about brand awareness, empathy, and, and getting your message out there. For activity goals, um, you know, customer reach outs. Uh, if, if this is new to your radar and you're not thinking about this, you're way behind the eight ball and, and I'm not trying to be, to be overly harsh, but customer reach outs, empathy, care, consideration, uh, and awareness of their business sustainability are absolutely critical for you. Think of it as support and sustainability. The support side is showing that you care and, and it has to be sincere. If it's not sincere, um, you, it'll be called out immediately. If you have a, a text-based relationship with your customer or you're on WhatsApp with them or, or you message on the phone or your salespeople do, they should continue to do that. And they should be checking in with their, hey, how are you? How's the family? Just checking in to make sure everything's okay. As you know, I'm always here for you. That simplicity of message is so humbly important. I mean, I posted on LinkedIn the other day, I had reached out to a bunch of our partners and one of my partners shared with me a week later that um, they had not received another reach out of that type from any of their partners. Their partners had reached out with deal opportunities, discounts, um, checking for opportunity updates, and you know, a lot of typical business rhythm stuff, but nobody checked in on them as a person and their people as people. Um, that is absolutely critical. If, if you're a business that has real relationships with your customers, prove it now. Um, and they'll remember it in the long run. Uh, opportunity management and tuning for forecasting. Opportunities still need to be managed. You have stuff that's in your pipeline um, and you're going to use that to, to forecast. You need to be aware of that. Opportunities that are real require your best hitter to come in as a designated hitter right now. And the best hitter is typically you, the owner and the leader. Get involved in that opportunity, discount it if needed, um, massage any of the, the rough edges and, and find out what's holding the deal up. But before you can get involved, you need to see if these opportunities are real or not. So you should be, as a sales leader, you should be going through your pipeline and you should be you know, separating um, the wheat from the chaff. What is real and what isn't real? What is likely to happen now? What is not likely to happen now? And, and don't exclude things for, for any specific reasons. I mean, I was talking to a partner yesterday where we have a half a million dollar infrastructure upgrade um, that was planned. My automatic assumption when I was dealing with that partner is that's never going to happen. It's actually gonna happen because it's business critical to an element of their business that supports customers that hasn't been um, impacted at all. They still need that to happen. Um, so I think you need to dive into your, your pipeline and really understand that. Tune it, get rid of the stuff. If it's 90 plus days, move it out of your view. Don't worry about it. The odds are you're not gonna be able to, to get it done today move it away and move it out um, but tune that forecasting and tune your opportunities 
um, prepare for the bounce back. And these are the activities that I think are the most important. These are the ones that for me as a salesperson, um, I had my best years following um, these significant upheavals. And I think for you as businesses, as long as you can make it through this and, and, and be prepared, the bounce back and, and that empathy and all of the seeds that you're gonna plant now are really gonna help you create that success. Um, you know, this is something I've talked to a number of our partners about, and it's a, a rigor that you should get into on a regular basis. White space and portfolio planning exercises. You know, this is really digging deep. If you have time now um, and you have customers, don't, don't let a half an hour here and an hour there go to waste waiting for the phone to ring. Dive into your client portfolio and, and map it out on the top of, of an Excel spreadsheet or a, a Word document or on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. Um, put here are all the solutions that we provide on the, the you know, let's, I guess we'll call that the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, put all the client names and then put boxes in all of them. Which ones have which solutions and which ones don't? It, it, it seems like a really simplistic exercise. 99% of companies that I deal with, um, partners that I deal with on a regular basis have never gone through this activity. And when you ask them about penetration of certain products within their client portfolios, they, they throw exorbitant numbers of, oh, 70, 80%. When you do this exercise, you'll find those 70 or 80% are 50, 40, 30. And what that means is that critical solutions within your product makeup as MSPs are not being sold into the broad subsection of your clients. You know, you're getting bits and pieces, but what this white space exercise does is it makes it highly visible. There's either an X there for yes, or there's a blank spot there for no. What that allows you to do is start planning and road mapping against those clients. Which of these needs are critical? Which of these needs are relevant right now? Security, email security, remote access, that's critical right now. Which are critical coming out of this? The ability to scale, the ability to add new users, um, you know, security will always be relevant. Office 365, if they're still on-prem, um, that white space and planning exercise allows you to help plan your approach for sales in a systematic way. Business development is scientific. Anybody who tells you it's an art form, no, I disagree. The conversations after are an art form. Being prepared for those conversations is science, and you should be doing that science now. Um, you should be prioritizing changes uh, within your teams based on activity levels. I mean, the, the hard thing is, as business leaders um, sitting back and looking at this, is, is that you know there are going to be changes. If this is a prolonged um, period of time, you're going to need to know your customers better because the odds are you're going to be managing some of them again. Um, so understanding those customers and prioritizing the changes is important. And then training both internal and external. Uh, never has there been a better time to up your team's games. Um, as a sales manager, one of your goals should be training. And, and whether that's in your go-to-market and the workflows that you utilize within the business, whether that's speed training about your solutions and what you've developed, or whether that's partner training with with stuff that you're doing you know i know there's a lot of sales trainers that are out there i know there's a lot of technology vendors that are offering massive discounts on training and many of these trainings are free getting your team busy up and upping their skill set for their customer empathy efforts now and for their customer engagement and selling efforts later that's hugely important as, and as you as a sales manager um, tracking those activities and assigning those activities hugely important Michael, any thoughts on that? No, <clears throat> no, I think you hit it really well. I think the one thing I'd ask you for some clarity on is you, you mentioned the outreach goals. Is Can you give a little more specificity? Is it just purely, you know, call these many, call, send out these many LinkedIn's, call these many people? What, what, how do you set those outreach goals? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think, you know, it, that actually leads us right into what new performance metrics do you set? And I, I think for all of you, you should have, um, I know you have advanced CRMs and I know there's lots of this advanced stuff. You need to make it really simple to compile information right now. Um, so my recommendation is build a customer tracker. Um, and that customer tracker is really a, a simple spreadsheet that, that on the side says, here's all of our customers. Um, here's what we're expecting from our sales team for regular contacts. Um, and that this is the empathetic side of the situation. Um, this is the identification of risk and business sustainability. This is the executive conversation with those clients to say, 
Hey, how's the impact to your business been? How has this impacted your customers? You know, and how has this impacted your ability to pay your vendors? A lot of people look at me when I say that and they're like, oh, you can't have that conversation. It's too critical. If you're a strategic partner to a business and you're dealing with the right person, you're not dealing with the head of procurement, you're not dealing with the IT manager, you're dealing with somebody from finance or a business executive on that client side, asking them if they're going to be able to pay so that you can appropriately manage your business is a completely fair question. And, and there's no reason, you know, you may get clients who say, well, I'm not just not going to share that with you. Okay, no problem. But you should be rating your clients. Um, on a risk register that really allows you to understand whether they're at risk or not. Um, you know, you should understand their current situation in this tracker. Are they open? Are they closed? Um, or are they blended? They're still doing a bit of business and, and they're not doing some. This also gives you the opportunity to say, how's your remote access doing? Um, you're on this, you're now tied to Teams or this collaboration tool. How are your teams doing with that? This is where those small hits that Michael talked about a little bit can come in. You know, I, you know, I'm really concerned that we're doing a lot more by email and, and we're seeing a lot of this ransomware and phishing stuff come in. We're worried about that. You know, we can help with that. There's a simple tool. Here's a demo product. There's lots of them available. Our organization has one. You know, here's a demo of a, a 60 day trial of an email security tool. You can put it in place. There's no commitment. Um, give that a try. You know, you can solve some of these small problems, but only if you know they exist. Uh, we're going to talk, I'll talk on the next one about the LinkedIn stuff, Michael, because I, I think that, that's a little bit more important there. Um, now is the time to do CRM cleanups, um, nail down this habit, hammer it home. All of your customer contact information and critical data should be in there. Um, that portfolio planning that I talked about um, should be done and, and you should be tracking that. Uh, any sort of accounts receivable work and, and admin activity, now is the time for that. And then that training side um, is really important. Um, the, the LinkedIn reach outs, I mean, that that really falls into your, your whole networking and business development. And, and I sort of had that on the, the salesperson activity, but from a sales manager perspective, have your unique customer profile laid out, make sure your team knows it. Make sure that as Michael said, they are targeting absolutely everybody and targeting means connecting with them sending a personal message hey um i wanted to connect with you on linkedin um we're in the same industry or we have a, a mutual network you know an introductory message that makes sense um, makes you relevant and tangible um, and never follow that up with a, a sales pitch please um you know target them on linkedin and then start sharing corporate activity. Most of you will still be sending out uh, marketing updates. Make sure your salespeople are diligently sharing that and track it. Um, start building their personal brands on there. Uh, bring some thoughts and ideas from your team out there. Let everybody build a bit of their own personal brand. You know, this is the watering holes that people are at. Um, you can see it in all of the social media statistics. While people are at home, they're paying more attention to social media. This is when you as an organization and your people as their own personal brands can start sharing information about ransomware attacks, about things that are happening in local geographies, about opportunities to, to save money through government programs. Add value back to the community and build that cycle of reciprocation. Uh, a couple of the other points, you know, uh, do you change the qualification criteria for opportunities? Yes, absolutely. You need to think outside of the box. Uh, um, salespeople going it alone, no, do four-legged calls. You as business leaders and sales leaders have so much more experience doing this. You're gonna ask different questions. You're gonna approach it from a, a different angle. Salespeople are often conflicted with this. They're worried that they're being scrutinized. This is all about making every at bat count. That is so essential right now. Putting your best foot forward with all of the real opportunities and making sure that you are fully qualifying it, but that you're also maybe taking a little bit more risk than you used to. Maybe you don't have Teams expertise or you don't think you have Teams expertise, but guess what? You probably know Teams a lot better than your client. So if your client's saying, can somebody, do you guys have a training program for Teams? If you use it on a regular basis and you have internal stakeholders or, or subject matter experts who help other team members, they can absolutely run through a training. It's easy for you to put that together and create a new product that's relevant in the marketplace right now. It doesn't take this massive forensic exercise to launch a new product like that. Um, I, I think you, you have to be opportunistic. 
um, and playing a role in helping the customer. And if you have customers that are reaching out right now, asking for anything, it begets you to put your best foot forward, um, put your best hitter in the box and, and you know, um, make sure that you're not striking out because opportunities are going to be fewer and fewer as time goes on. Yeah, that's a good point is every opportunity now is like precious. Absolutely. And, and you should treat it that way. I think the second uh, thought I had, well, let's shift gear into salespeople because I know a lot of the people on the phone, both the owners would be the salespeople, but also there's a bunch of people here that actually have a business development role sure. for a for their company. And what advice, like when you, when you were the salesperson, you know, in that role and you have salespeople working for you now. What, what as a salesperson, what's most important for you to be doing uh, on a daily basis here? Uh, I, I think routine, get up early, wake up, follow your routine, wake yourself up, get your mind thinking. That means, you know, shaving, showering, doing whatever your morning routine used to be, do it again. Wake up and it be as normal as possible. Um, and you must, must, especially now with all the negativity around us, you have to find a way to come on with a positive perspective. If that means you're listening to your, your happy music for half an hour, listen to it. If meditation's your thing, do it. Um, if punching a bag is your thing, do it. But walk into the day with a positive perspective. And some of the things to think about, you're still employed. There's a lot of people that aren't. You still have clients that you get to talk to. And you have an opportunity now to build a non-selling, non-contentious relationship with them through empathy, care, and support. Those little reach outs, asking how they are, listening to their day, hearing their kids in the background, you will develop a different relationship with your client now than ever before. Um, know that your competitors are getting weaker. Every, you know, I, I, we live in a competitive society. That's just the way that it is. Um, your competitors are dealing with many of the same issues that you are. And there's a lot of competitors. There's a lot of early entrants to market or complacent companies that right now aren't being proactive, that right now are removing staff and, and aren't reaching out to their customers that are resting on their laurels. You have to know that your, your competitors are getting weaker. And the more that you focus, the more that you're energized, the more that you're positive, the stronger you're getting. And then I think for you, you know, you have a chance to breathe right now. So all of that stuff and whether it was excuses before or whether it was real, all that stuff that you weren't getting to that you figured would have made you a little bit better, that 5% better, cleaning up your inbox, doing that little bit of, of Microsoft training, um, cleaning up the CRM with and getting rid of the garbage data, strategizing with your technical teams on, on, a, on an account plan so that you can attack that ABC account um, with that networking opportunity that you know is there, but you've never been able to get your network architects time, that you can do that now. You have the space to do that now. The more prepared you are um, coming out of this, the more you plan those conversations with the customers, plan your attack after this, plant those seeds now, um, the better off you're going to be. Um, in order to do that, I, you know, Michael, I, I don't know about you, but if anybody ever looks at my calendar, it's disgusting because it is organized and mm. I plan everything out. Use your calendar to plan your time. First off, that's how you stay coordinated and effective and get stuff done. You set a, a, a time snap around something uh, and you dedicate the time and you get it done. Uh, it also helps show you, you know, when your boss is asking you for those regular updates, you have some sort of facility to be able to provide that information. Um, Put customer requests first. Your customers um, request availability and velocity are your two best words right now. Be available and be fast and effective. Things don't wait anymore until this afternoon. Uh, it doesn't matter if you don't have a cup of coffee and you're feeling a little bit tired. If your customers ask for something, get them the answer as soon as possible because your availability and velocity is being tested right now, even if you don't think so. Um, Outstanding deliverables, get them done. If you've been asked to do something by your boss, um, the, the time is now to get it done. This is not a time to, to argue or second guess or, or to have your own priorities. You need to follow the priorities that the business has set. Um, I think, you know, if you're not doing huddles and meetings with your teammates and, and with your sales leader, I mean, th those are essential right now. Daily catch-ups, that camaraderie, that sense of humanity, but also those mutual updates it helps reinforce that stuff is happening within clients. And maybe your clients were quiet yesterday, but Johnny and Frankie and Lizzie's weren't. Um, knowing that they weren't help goes right back to Michael's point that sales are still happening, 
um, and you have to feel that energy. You know, when everything is about forward momentum, you need to feel it and, and be a part of it. Um, schedule your customer reach outs, make, make sure that they're in your calendar um, and do it. Don't say, oh, I forgot to do that. I should have wrote that down. Write it down, use your calendar. Um, other things that, that made me successful in these times, business development as a science, um, understanding your unique customer profile, knowing, you know, I've really wanted to go after that company for a long time, or looking at your current clients and saying, who are their competitors and starting to, to identify their competitors because you have a valid story for them. Um, get real comfortable with LinkedIn and start building a, a profile on there. You know, be where your customers are, be where your prospects are. If they post something and an interesting tidbit, follow it up and say, that's a great point. Here are some of my thoughts on it. Be unique, stand out. Um, I really plant as many seeds as you can. Be the one who is always available and know that everything that you do now is being watched, scrutinized and will pay dividends in the long run. If you're lazy now, your results are gonna suck in the long run. If you're diligent and focused and wake up ready to go with a positive attitude now, you're, you're planning your future for yourself. Awesome, that's actually why I love to have somebody like yourself on, Chris, because I can tell by the way you talk, you've actually lived this and had to learn these lessons kind of the hard way when you're, when you're forgive me, a younger person, you know, so. It's good to it's good to be able to share this wisdom with what it what it takes to get up every morning and kind of kind of suit up and show up and get out there and uh, do what you got to do. I was gonna the other thing and it kind of ties into what uh, what Chris was just talking about. The other thing I found is having collaboration and support is helpful at this time. So one thing like we've done in within my STP group is we we have our owners get together once a week to work out their game plan and then I talk to them individually each week so any of you guys that have you know MSP owners or you can maybe help set you up one or something but it's what you really want to do is get with other people in the same situation and be able to uh, kind of collaborate and challenge each other as as owners first of all because that's going to keep you on track, keep you from getting, you know, to getting distracted by things that aren't important at this point. And what we do in those groups is you would have like a weekly, just a weekly check-in, and then a game plan for the week, and then support, ask for support in terms of, you know, tools or techniques or anything like that. And then two is what you might want to do is if you're a salesperson, the other thing that we've done is uh, get our salespeople within the STP program together, and it's something you guys might want to do. On your own is is get together with other salespeople. It doesn't even have to be. It can be people in the MSP industry and in a non-competitive marketplace, or it can be, you know, people that are business development people that, that you just know locally, and just uh, form your own little mastermind group and your own little accountability group. And that could be that could be a way to keep yourself uh, uh, motivated as well. And the other thing I was going to offer everybody here is if we, I had done a similar program for this on the client account management side that we had. Uh, that we had recorded, and I will put uh, that recording and this recording up on uh, on my website so that people can access it. So, um, any final words to everybody, Chris? I mean, you, you had I, lo I loved your your kind of practical approach to the whole thing. What is it? What would you say, kind of in a in a final word sense to everybody? Well, I, I you know my final words is lean on lean on your community. Look at it as as coopetition. Um, you, you guys are really fortunate to be involved with, with a guy like Michael and, and a group like this um, where they're able to, to bring some of these learnings and, and different people with different experiences to bear. Uh, that community of people, you know, understanding what they're doing to, to fight the good fight and battle some of the hardships and challenges that are in the market right now, that's so essential. You don't have to recreate the wheel and, and do it on your own. Uh, I think knowledge is power right now. I mean, all the stuff that I'm talking about here, you know, I share this sort of stuff on LinkedIn on a regular basis. Um, hit me up on LinkedIn. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to talk. Um, the stuff that I share is, is right around these same lines. Um, and stay connected with Michael and your peers because uh, knowledge is power in this time and, and you're not alone. That's the, the biggest message. Stay positive, you're not alone. On that note, unless there's any uh, last minute questions, I'm going to uh, thank thank Chris for his time. And I think I've 
Chris and I have just uh, built a new friendship together <laughs> over the last week or so that I hope we, we can continue and, uh, and collaborate on many more things in the future. But for all of you out there too, is just remember, uh, you know, action is therapeutic. Like if you see yourself just kind of staring off into the distance and worrying about the future, then it's not doing you any good. You know, think about instead, take the time and figure out what is it I can be doing right now that's going to make me more successful either today or in the near future. So with that, I will end the broadcast. And again, be, be if you're interested in, the, in either of those recordings, I will send out an email and let you know uh, how, to, how you can find those on my website. Thanks, everybody. And thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michael.